Render therefore to all their due. Taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Welcome everybody to Sunday. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord? When I was growing up, my father and my mother, who is here today, put us boys. So there are, there are three uh, of us Muncies. There is, uh, I'm the oldest, Joe is the second, and Philip Muncy, that's preached here many times, is the third, and then my sister, she is the fourth. Us three boys lived down in a basement most of our lives, and we enjoyed it, and we thought it was phenomenal, except for the times that uh, the basement flooded and we got out of bed in the water. Didn't enjoy that, but we enjoyed uh, being in the basement, slept in the basement, and it was great. My dad had a thing every single, uh, well, not every morning. I think my mother got us up for school. But on Sunday, my dad was so excited about church. He would stand at the top of the step, and he would, he would say, Boys, are you up? Boys, are you up? And my dad would always start two hours earlier because he was always on fire to, Let's go to church. Let's get there early. And uh, he, just, he just loved church. And he wanted us to love church. But we, as boys growing up, uh, uh, we didn't love church as much as Dad did because we were just boys. And, and uh, we thought that Sunday was the day of rest. And so we loved to sleep. But he would not let us sleep, un, you know, over. And we never could miss church. I don't, ever, I, don't, I don't remember ever missing church. Even when I was sick, I went to church. So, you know, we knew we were going to go to church. But two hours before we had to get up, and so he would say at the top of the step, boys, are you up? And we started to learn. Thank you, Cheryl. Appreciate it. We started a, a little game that went on for years that my dad never knew about. What we would do is we would talk to each other loud enough so my dad would think that we were up. We say, Phil, I can't find my pants. Where's my belt? And we never moved out of the bed and had another hour of sleep. If my dad was to come down the steps, there was 13 steps, counted them, maybe 14. Uh, it took my dad maybe probably about seven or eight seconds to get down the steps in a quick way. Uh, that was plenty of time for us to put our shirts on our legs and our pants on our arms to show him that we were fastly trying to get ready for church. Now, this went on for years. This went on for years. He would say, boys, are you up? Yes, we're up. We never moved out of the bed, and we would talk to one another in the bed. We did this for years. I left and began to uh, preach the gospel at 18 and begin to travel. Joe was in left, and then Joe left. He went to college and moved on, and then Philip was by himself, and I'm sure Sheila, she slept upstairs, so I don't know her situation, but Philip started doing this by himself. <laughs> Next time you see Phil up here, you can look at him. And, and uh, he, you know, he's Joel Osteen's assistant and preaches on Wednesday night at Lakewood. And so he started talking out loud 
out loud hoping that my dad would hear him. And so he would, he would say, I cannot find my shoes. But he never moved out of the bed. My dad must have got a revelation one day. He took three steps at a time as fast as he could down the steps. He just knew Phil was not up. And, and Phil was not up. And, and he heard my dad coming down the step, but my dad was coming down thump, thump, thump. He broke a record that day of nearly three and a half seconds. Philip did not know what to do. Of course, he spoiled rotten anyway because he's the third little baby boy. He had chap skin, so we all felt sorry for him or something. I don't know what the deal was. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know. He could grab pants, belt, nothing. He was caught flat-handed in the bed. My dad opened up that door. Philip, are you up? And Philip was so brilliant. I don't know. He, that, this, is, this is the brilliancy of my brother Philip. He bails out of bed, and he's on his knees. He's got his hands up, and he's praying. <laughs> True story. My, he's in his underwear praying with his hands up. He's not dressed nothing. And my dad walks up. Philip, are you? Oh, son, I'm so sorry. God bless you. Just keep praying, son. True story. <laughs> there are several places just in the Bible where the Bible talks about wake up out of sleep. In our text today, we are talking, Paul is talking that people, people, people actually get what we would say, as Paul was talking about, encephalitis or a sleeping disease, that they are alive, they're awake, but the fact is, is that they go to sleep. They tell me that there are truck drivers that, that really, ha and, and, and so many truck drivers and, and people who are on the road, uh, uh, they do the best they possibly can to keep themselves awake because they travel the road so much. They see the lines on the road, the signs. They know their patterns. They know the cities. They, they travel hundreds of miles. They double shift. They know the loudness of the truck. Uh, they have everything in sequence. And they begin, they begin to get acclimated until uh, the testimonies of many truck drivers will tell you that even though that I'm awake, I'm driving the truck and I am, I am switching lanes and I'm stopping and I am going from city to city and I live on the road. They talk about a sleep, a sleep that happens but their eyes are open and they are functioning. It's like women and, and all of us have had that experience of putting our hands uh, of washing dishes and, and all of a sudden we're staring and we just keep going through systematically uh, what we have always done until we're still reaching in the dirty water looking for another dish and realize and look over there and they're all done. We were awake, we were going through the motions, but actually we went to sleep. We go through the motions of life and we, and, 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 and we, just, we just say, it's going to be all right in the morning. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And we go through patterns of life. We drive certain patterns. Uh, we eat in certain patterns. And we just go through the motions of life. Apostle Paul is telling us in our text today, he is saying it's high time to awake out of sleep. He is dealing with this. And in, and in several passages in the Bible, in fact, the ten virgins, you will go to the ten virgins. You'll, you'll read about Jesus is talking about the ten virgins, I believe, in the book of Luke. And, and the Bible talks about where he, the, the virgins, there were five wise and there were five foolish. And the Bible talks about that the virgins went to sleep. The five foolish went to sleep. And the virgins, when they went to sleep, the bridegroom call it, come, it's time, come on in, it's over. And the Bible says the five foolish virgins did not have oil in their lamp. They did not trim their lamp. They immediately went to the five wise and said, help, help us, we need oil, quick, 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 so we can go in and not be lost and not be left out. And the Bible says they slept. While the wise kept the oil, kept praying, kept reading the Bible, kept being alert, kept, kept watching in the night and, and kept believing no thief was going to come and, and they were stirring themselves up and the Bible says they slumbered and they slept. Let me just say to everybody that there is a danger in being saved. 
and the danger is I'm saved and the Lord has saved me. He's forgiven me. I can just do anything I want. I can commit adultery. God will forgive me. I can get drunk. God will forgive me. I can go through the motions. I can live like the devil Monday through Friday and come on Sunday and get a little bit of washing in a feel-good situation. And I can just go through the motions and I know this is happening and that's happening. The shootings in Chicago and I know the divorce rate is up and I know they just passed a law for same-sex marriage and I know we've killed 60 million aborted babies and we go through all of that until we get really really caught up in in the fact that we don't know why we're here what is about to happen what God is getting ready to do and nobody has a guarantee to live past tonight at 6 p.m. 96 people die every single minute. 5,760 die every single hour. There's 138,240 people that will die by midnight tonight. And it doesn't matter if you're a baby or you're 90 years of age. It doesn't matter if you're black or you're white or you're rich or you're poor. That's the truth that while I'm talking, 96 people are dying and death will hit the obituary columns of all periodicals and whenever it is printed. And let me tell you, I wonder today, are you on the list? Because no man can say, for the Bible says, he that boasteth of a tomorrow speaketh as a fool because no one has guarantee of tomorrow. You better wake up. That's what Paul is saying. He is saying we need to awake. We need to, we need to, we need to wake up. We need to realize that, that we, the people, have got to be careful that we don't get into the pleasures of life. Stop going to church. It's not important. Church is not important. Uh, you know, I know that COVID came and it began to put divide and thank God for the social media platforms. But let me tell you, I want to be honest with you. Thank God for the shut-in that are able because they can't come to church and they get it through streaming. But if you've got good legs and you've got a car and you've got ability... There's no excuse for you not to come to the house of the Lord. In a moment, I will tell you that it is so important for the Bible says, forsake not the assemblies of yourselves. And the Bible says you need to do it the more as you see the end of time coming. Is he lying? What's he saying? What's he mean? What's, it, what's going on? And there are times in which we need to say to ourselves, my God, am I going to sleep? Am I numb? In fact, the Bible says that people who are saved will start scoffing and laughing and living like, as Peter says, where's the promise of his coming? I've heard Jesus is coming all my life. It's no big deal. I've got a party to go to tomorrow. I've got, I've got a social event I've got to get to. Um, I've got to see my kids until until we have scheduled ourselves up until we have spiritual encephalitis that we are going through the motions and we need, as Paul says, you better wake up out of your sleep because salvation or the end of the world is nearer than you think. <laughs> Somebody tell your body to clap your hands. You're kind of, you got to stir you to wake up, you know. Wake up! Wake up to the fact of what is happening on October 7th. Unbeknownst to any of us and the intelligence of Israel, we must understand that Israel is a sign. In Isaiah 8, the Bible teaches us that Israel is a sign. Doesn't matter whether you like Israel or you like the seed of Abraham, God has chosen them whether you like it or not. And what God has blessed, no man can curse. And what God has cursed, no man can put a blessing on. The Bible said, Behold I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwell in the Mount Zion. Israel is the thermostat. It's the thermostat to adjust what's going on. What is happening? That's what's happening. What, what is happening? We look at Israel. Did you know that every 30 verses, every 30 verses in the New Testament talks about the rapture of the church? Every 30 scripture verses in the New Testament makes reference of a rapture. The rapture in which will happen that's never happened 
before, since man has been created. Ne never in the sixth chapter of Genesis was there rain that came from the sky. All of you, surely you've made it to the sixth chapter of Genesis when you've read your Bible. Surely you've made it to the sixth chapter of the very first book where the Bible says that God told Noah to build an ark and the Bible says that it rained and it destroyed the whole world. Now you must understand there was never no such thing as rain. Now, for me to say that to you, you just kind of shrug it off and say, well, man, we know it's rain, rain this morning, rain yesterday, etc." There was no such thing as rain. The earth was fed by the dew and the water. So when Noah was saying to people, when they said, what are you building? This is a gigantic, titanic thing. What are you doing? And the Bible says it took him 100 years to build that ark. And, and he says, it's going to rain. God's going to destroy the world. You know what they did? They laughed. They laughed. They drank. They got drunk. They had sexual escapades. They never went to church. They thought it was a joke. They went on having a party of their life. For the Bible said they were eating and they were drinking and they were having a party and everything was going on until Noah entered into the ark. Listen closely to this. The rapture is going to take place before the battle of Armageddon. The rapture is going to take place before the tribulation hits this world. There is seven years of it, and it's going to be absolutely horrific. Read it in the book of Revelation of a hundred pile, hundred pound hailstones are going to fall upon this earth. Read that the third of the earth is going to be burned up with fire. Read that the third of the earth will be killed. Read about the third of the earth that will be beheaded by the Antichrist in the seven year tribulation. And it's all focusing in and how is that all focusing in? It's focusing in because the gauge and, and the compass is Israel. Whatever happens in Israel, what, whatever is going on in Israel is what we have to pay attention to. Apostle Paul says Israel is our example. In the New Testament, he talks about Israel is our example. Meaning that whatever happens in Israel, you better wake up and ask yourself, is there any Bible prophecy that is pertaining to what's going on in Israel? And this is where I want to excite you this morning because we are not to hang our heads and we are not to say, oh my God, we are in a crisis. Everybody that is a believer should know that the outcome is incredible for the believer. If you're not a believer, if you, if you are asleep, let me tell you what, if you're asleep, you don't want Jesus to come back. It'll mess up your schedule, mess up your money, mess up what you're doing, and inside you're saying just what Peter promoted and said, there's a day coming that the people are gonna say, where is the promise of his coming? I've heard that last year, and I saw that last year. Just remember that if you're thinking any kind of that thought, then you have entered into the dimension of delusion. For the Bible says in the last days, God will send a delusion to who? To people who used to be saved on fire for God, but they've turned their mouths into cursing and to drinking and they have no respect for God and they're not praying anymore. They used to be on fire. You know what I'm talking about? They used to be awake. They carried their Bible. They would not miss a prayer meeting, but all of a sudden they went to sleep and they're carried away with all kinds of idolatry. They're no longer given their tithes. They're no longer interested in the kingdom. And Paul is saying, Saying it's time to, and everybody shout it with me, wake up! That's what he's saying. Wake up. Because if we are not careful, the Bible says that, that if we if we get this spirit of encephalitis on it, the fact is, is that is that God says, I will send a strong delusion and you'll believe a lie. Oh, for God's sake, I don't want to be in the church. Believe in a strong delusion. And you know how the strong delusion comes? When you lose the love for God. When you start loving your money. When you start loving other things. When you let things separate you from God. Am I doing a good job so far here? And, 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 and you start not paying attention. You may not like me, but let me tell you, people who backslide and people who are asleep and people who don't love the Bible anymore want to kill the preacher and 
and want to kill the prophets because they are the only ones that can sound the trumpet in Zion. Wake up! So when we, begin to, uh, when we begin to say about Israel, if I could break this all down, and, and come on, give me some Israel on the back of the screen, get that off so they can, I can take everybody to Israel like you did that last song. And, and let, let me just tell you that Israel, it's all going, it started out there, and it's all going to end there. I'm going to try to break this down just in simple uh, little terms and, 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 and try to get you to understand where we are. You see, Israel, in 70 A.D., when Titus came in and burnt down the temple, he distributed, he dispersed, he chased the Jews out like they were chased out of Gaza uh, yesterday. And a million and a half people have went north and they went south in the strip of Gaza because of what Hamas has done. Now listen closely, that Israel left Palestine and the holy place. I don't know if they have a map. I don't know if they have a map, David. I don't know if you have a map. Here is the map you see. You see where Jerusalem is. So here is Jerusalem, and you see uh, there's a, a, a Gaza Strip. You see some areas there. You see Jordan here. Uh, you see the West Bank and Jerusalem is just, uh, a, really Israel is the yellow and, and that is uh, shared, it is shared with the Palestinians. I'll talk to you about that. There's the West Bank. Uh, act, actually, the Palestinians, they don't go into Jordan. Jordan has its own king and they are, they are, uh, they are very friendly to Israel. They're on the border you see the West Bank up there. You see the Palestine area. Then you go up to Damascus, Golden Height, which is Lebanon, and you see Syria. All of that is connected around there. All of this is very scriptural. I'll read that in just a moment. And so God, God said, I am going to give you Abraham, Israel, and Palestine too, because Palestine is the holy ground. Now both share it, both Jews and both Palestines share it. The only problem is, is that there, this is a brother fight. This is a brother fight. The Palestinians, the Arab world and the Jews, it's a, it's a brother thing. Do you understand what I mean by a brother thing? You, you know what happened, right? You read the Bible. Surely you read the first book in the Bible. Abraham and Sarah were going to have a baby, and they weren't having it, and she was 85, and she says, hey, look, Abe, you're dead, I'm dead. Hey, it's over. We went from king bed, queen bed. We're in twin bed. Now we're in separate bedrooms. It's not going to happen. Abraham says, yes, but God said we're going to have a child. No, it's not going to happen. You go in there and you get Hagar. You get this Egyptian maid. You get her pregnant. Then we'll adopt this child. And then we'll do God's will. You can't tell God what to do. If God said, I'm going to give you a baby, and it don't matter if you're 85, and it don't matter if you're not. If my mother got married, and she said to me, and, uh, I, and she's probably not going to get married because she loved my father, and she's been faithful and, and for many years of marriage. But my mother's 92. If my mother got married, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just using you as an example, Mom. I'm not saying you should get married. I'm not telling you to get married. I think you're better off single because, you know, I, I think, I, I think it's, it's good that you're single. I don't know. I don't know if I could accept the new man in your life anyway, so don't, don't get married. But just say if my mother got married, she came to me and said, uh, Stephen, uh, I'm pregnant, 92 and a half, 93. I would say that's impossible, that's impossible. In fact, the Bible does give us some explanations that when Sarah finally got pregnant, she was 90 years of age. And the Bible says, the Bible explains their bodies being dead. It's impossible for them to have a baby. And this is where the scripture verse comes in. You can speak those things that are not as though they were. And the fact is, is that Abraham never faltered at the promises of God, even though Sarah laughed. Be careful what you laugh about, because God is faithful. He does not lie. He's not a man that cannot lie. So what has happened here? So they get, so Abraham, by his wife's permission, gets Hagar pregnant. They have a son called Ishmael, okay? Now we have a half-brother. We have the same father, but we have, a, we have an Egyptian mother, okay? So Ishmael is born. Ishmael. Everybody say Ishmael. And so uh, about a year later, she gets pregnant. Who? Sarah. 
Sarah gets pregnant. It's unbelievable. They have a son, Isaac. Sarah then says to Abraham, get rid of the maid. Get rid of Hagar. Get rid of Ishmael. We got a baby now. Get rid of them. The Bible says that Abraham had to put her out in the desert. You remember? You remember that God sent an angel to Hagar and the baby, Ishmael. Okay? He said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to take care of you. They're but, so that's the Arab world. That's the Palestinians. That's the brother fighting Ishmael and Isaac. You guys are playing around with your marriage. The decisions you make now, you don't think it'll affect 40 generations from now? The stuff you do behind everybody's back, the adultery, the con. The, all the stuff you do, you think, I can get by with it. It will come out in generations after you. And the reason why we're in the situation we're in today is because somebody got out of God's order. Sarah and Abraham got out of order. You got to believe God. He's not lying. If he tells you, I'm going to give you a baby. If he tells you, I'm going to bless you. If he tells you, I'm going to supply all of your needs. If he tells you, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. If he tells you, wake up. If he tells you, don't go to sleep. If he tells you, trim your lamps, put the oil in it, keep praying, keep occupying, keep believing, put on the whole armor of God, contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. My God, wake yourself up. And quit waiting for a bomb to drop in your backyard. Have enough sense to know something is going on crazy. So the signpost, the signpost, if anything should happen in Bible prophecy, so now we have Ishmael or we have the whole Arab nation. You know how many there are in the Arab nation? You want to know how many there are? 1.5 billion. You know what? You want to know how many Isaacs there are in the world? 14 million. Six million are in New York, seven million, go back to the map, are in Israel, and there's a million scattered through a little Miami and a little here and a little there. There are 14 million Jews, and there are 1.5 billion Arabs. They both have the same father, and they are both blessed. One's got oil, the other one's got diamonds. And God has said, I'm going to bless the seed of Abraham. Here's the good part for you that get a little bit better in reading the Bible more than just the Old Testament. You will discover that Jesus came who was a Jew, who was from the seed of David, all the way going back to Abraham. Jesus was not Palestinian. He was not Arab. He came from the seed of David. He was a Jew, but he came as God's son, died upon the cross, gave us a new covenant or a new testament and said, I'm going to take the sins away. I'm going to be slaughtered. I'm going to be the sacrifice. Anybody that believes in me, I will give you eternal life. I will forgive you of your sins. I will prepare a place for you. I'm going to take you out into a heaven and you will live forever. Anybody want to live forever? He died, he, he died, he was buried, and he rose again. And he was a Jew. He went to his own first. God has said, I will bless the seed of Abraham. Then God came up with the idea through his son, Jesus. He said, Jesus, we're going to make a new covenant. I'm going to reach out for people who are not Jewish. I'm going to reach out beyond the sons of Issachar and the sons of Isaac and the sons of, 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 of the Arab world and I'm going to reach 
black people and reach white people and these people are called Gentiles. So now there are 7 billion people on the planet. There's 1.5 billion Arabs which are the seed of Hagar, Ishmael, 14 million Jews. But God says, now you figure that up, that's, that gets us up to somewhere, uh, somewhere around nearly, you know, one eight, one nine. but there's 7 billion people on the planet. So God says, through Jesus, I'm going to make a new plan. I'm just not going to bless the 14 million Jews in 2023. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to their family. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them spiritual Jews when they believe in my son and they get born again. I'm going to put them in the family of Abraham because I promised Abraham I would make him rich. I would prosper him. I would bless him. I would do great things for him. So all of you that have been born again, you have been adopted into the family of Abraham. And we are spiritual Jews, so what are we to do? Our allegiance is to the Jews. It's, it's to Israel. It is to, because God has said it's blessed them. The Bible says in, in Zechariah, in the last days I will make the city of Jerusalem. Now, everybody needs to know this, that Jesus, when he comes back, when he comes back, he's coming back after those that have been born again, which is called the rapture. Okay, and, and the Bible says when we go in the rapture and we get married to him at the marriage supper of the Lamb, that's when all hell's going to break out for seven years. That's when Armageddon, that's when the Antichrist, that's when the world burns up, anybody left behind. Uh, all of those people, uh, there's a certain amount of salvation that comes, but it sounds like that it will only come out of Jerusalem and to the people that are there, which is Jewish and that the rest of the world will be beheaded, will be burned to death, will be destroyed, and anybody left behind, it's, 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 it, it will be horrific. Because you can't buy, eat, unless you take the mark of the beast. The Bible says if you take the mark of the beast, you're already judged, you'll go to hell. And let me just tell you, for you that think you got a second chance after the rapture, if you can't live for God now, you will gladly put your hand out and say I got to eat I need my money put the mark of the beast I'm going to hell anyway so that's what I'm going to serve is the antichrist that's just the way it's going to be because if you can't live for God under grace you'll never live for God under the persecution and the tribulation wake up that's what I'm preaching on today in other words everybody that has been born again in the world is in the Abrahamic family covenant God has said, he said it up front, God doesn't lie, God doesn't change. He says, he says, anyone that blesses Jerusalem, anyone that blesses the Jews, you'll get a blessing. Anyone that touches them, I will curse. You say, well, that's not fair. It is fair because that's the way you feel about your kids. Look at you. And all of you non-thinkers, stupid people who can't see the light because you're sleeping, you're playing, you're sinning, you think it's just a joke and you take sides against God's people and just because there's a demon spirit that gets in the Hamas, that's an antichrist spirit. Anybody that would go in and kill 250 young people who are celebrating the tabernacle and mow them down and take babies and butcher them and cut their heads off, that is demon possession. And that happened on October 7th when Hamas says, and Hamas is in, is in Gaza and is a spirit of, of and you hear it, terrorism, that says, we do not believe that Israel is a state. We do not believe that Israel should have the land. We will annihilate every Jew. You know what they're saying? God, we don't like you, and we don't like your plan, and we don't like what's going on, so we're going to take it in our own hands. That sounds like the Antichrist spirit to me. Are you listening to me? I'm trying to break this down as easily as I can. 
And the Bible says, God says, well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to make Israel, excuse me, I'm going to make Jerusalem a stumbling block. And in the last days, Jerusalem is going to be a problem for every nation on the earth. Do you have that scripture verse there? It's, uh, uh, they can prove it so they, they know that I'm not exaggerating. It's uh, Zechariah. Zechariah says, says uh, I will make Jerusalem a stumbling block. David, you got, you got the map there. Thank you very much. Now let me, let's go to Ezekiel 38. I'm going to do this real quick. Everybody wake up. Everybody wake up. I'm pretty nervous about this. I wish I could be preaching on something else besides this. I, 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 I wish I didn't have to do this. I, I wish I could make you feel good, change your diapers, and pass out a bunch of bottles and make you shout and go, go crazy, and we all sing the song and say, Woo! Man, we went to church. I'm just trying to ring the alarm clock to let you know something's getting ready to happen. I tried for weeks and weeks and weeks in this pulpit. I told you 2023 that if Abraham was born before Christ in 1948, 1948 years after Adam, B.C., he was born in Rosh Hashanah, Abraham. And then in 2023, before Christ, God called him out of the Chaldeans to make him a nation. And 1,000 years later to the year, you can't make this up. In 1948, Israel becomes a state, and they've been gone for 2,000 years. And God said, when I bring them all back to the land, that's when things are going to end up. They're back. Seven million, they're a state, they're a nation. And 1948 marked, after 2,000 years, the Bible says they will come back. What blows my mind? You can't make it up. 1,000 years later, after Abraham was born, Israel becomes a nation. 75 years later is 2023, and I stayed in this pulpit, and every service I have tried to tell everybody, something's going to, I did not know what's going to happen. I didn't know if it was going to be the rapture, but on October 7th, and let me tell you, that's a triple seven, because on October 7th is double seven, it's the double holy day, considered the seventh day to the Jews, and so it was in the seventh month on double seven, 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 on October 7th, all hell broke out and something happened that hasn't happened since World War II and that is 1,200 Jews were killed and that many Jews have not been killed since Hitler was in our war and in our world and they were burning Jews up in the incinerator and they killed 6 million Jews. That hasn't happened in years and years and years. Wake up. So Israel is the sign. Israel or Jerusalem will be the troublesome for the world. So we read in Ezekiel 38. Let's go to Ezekiel 38 and I'll try to cover the word of the Lord came into me saying, and this is the end of the world. Ezekiel sees the end of the world. Sees Armageddon and son of man set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. Chief prince of Meshach, Tubal and prophesy against him. Read a little more here. And thus saith the Lord God, I am against O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Meshach is Moscow. And, and, and let, me, let me just stop and show you what I've just read. Here's the city. The, the first thing that I just read to you, here are the countries that, that mean what I just read to you. Russia, Turkey, Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, Turkey. Okay, you see Turkey up there. You see, uh, you see Iran. We don't, Iran is over here. And, and Libya is in the yellow in Iran. And you see, well, there it is over there. You see it. It's all right here. So God says... Russia, Turkey, Persia, Iran, which is all connected and around, and Syria, all of those, God says, I'm going to put a hook in, I'm going to put a hook in the bear, I'm going to put a hook in the north. Let's read it, let's read it so you'll believe me. Wake up here, and thus saith the Lord, behold, I'm again, uh, let's keep moving here, that's all the countries. 
I will turn thee back. I will put hook into thy jaws. I will bring thee forth and all thy army, horses, horsemen, all clothed with the sports of armor, even a great company of buckler shields and all of them handling swords. They're talking about that all of these countries are going to come to Israel. He's actually talking about the last battle on the earth, which is the battle of Armageddon. Go to the 13th verse because my time is running out. 13th verse. Here's the other cities. There's the other country. Remember Zechariah. David, I, I gave you, I think, uh, Zechariah. Well, yeah, try to, I'll try to find it so that the people know uh, Zechariah, uh, that scripture verse in the 13th verse. But we won't go there now. And let me show you the other countries that are coming into Jerusalem for the big war. Here he says, Sheba. Uh, Dedan and the merchants of uh, uh, Tarisha and all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, Thou art come to take the spoil. Hast thou gathered the company to take prey and carry away silver, gold, to take away the cattle, goods, and great spoil? This is all Ezekiel 38 and 39. If you're trying to explain to somebody about the last battle of Armageddon, uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 is talking about that. Let me tell you what this means. When we see uh, Sheba, Dan, uh, Dedan, and uh, we're, it now is spreading to Saudi Arabia, and it is uh, Tarsha. Tarsha means uh, Spain and the European nations, and the young lions, see the young lions in this? It, that represents England, America, and Australia. That means that all of the nations are going to end up coming here, coming to Israel to a valley called the, ba the Battle of Armageddon. So Saudi Arabia is here. It's in the orange. Iraq is right there. And then Iran is, is right there. If I put all this together, you could see. Oh, yeah, you got me one. Thank you. You could see Iran. Iran is over here. Iraq, we've already been there. And then you see Turkey. You don't see Russia, but it's above that. And then you see Syria. Uh, you, see, you see Saudi Arabia. This is Saudi Arabia is a part of the 1.5 billion of the Ishmaelites, or the Arab world, the Arab world, okay? Then there is Egypt. Egypt is included in this, all of Egypt, all of that. The Bible says that Jerusalem will be a troublesome uh, a city. God will cause it to happen. This is God's deal. This is, not, this is not Putin. This is not Hamas. God causes this. There is a, there is a countdown with Satan and God. This thing is about to end. How do we know? The last thing that's going to happen will be the battle of Armageddon. Okay, keep those maps up there. Keep those maps up there. Thank you, David. Now watch this. On October 7th, Hamas. Who is Hamas? Hamas is a group of people within the Palestinian people or within the brotherhood of uh, the Arab world, okay? Hamas, Hamas was invented to destroy and so... Israel gave them the Gaza Strip. He gave not Hamas, he gave the Palestinians and they agreed and some 25 years ago they gave them that. They gave them the land said, there, here, you have it and, and, and please don't bother us. So Gaza is up here where you see the two little dots. There's a strip there. There is two and a half million. How many did I say? Two and a half million that live in Gaza Strip. There are tunnels under there and those people that live in Gaza Strip, and, and many of them are innocent, by the way. And listen, we're not, against the, we're not against the Palestinians. But let me tell you, when it comes to world prophecy, people become victim of it. And the key is, is that the Hamas decided to strike now watch this. The Bible said they shall say peace and safety. That's in the, in the New Testament. They shall say peace and safety and sudden destruction. Come on. That's in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Now watch what, what happened on October 7th. This is how close we are, hoping I can wake everybody up here. So on October 7th, Hamas, strangely that the intelligence of the Israel, which is the number one intelligence of intelligence of the world, and I read that our CIA knew something was happening and we closed the borders 10 days before this war started and they tried to notify and said something's about to break out. 
The reason why we close the borders and it's already too late because what's coming across the borders that we all feel sorry for and all the immigrants and many of those people, bless their hearts, are running from Venezuela, they're running from dictatorship and we do, we're, we're going to do our best to try to help them but what you don't know is Hamas came through the borders. They're in our city. They, they are planning. They are at our grids. They, they, they intend to do much damage like 9-11. You better wake up. You better wake up. And you better quit taking issues with people that say, well, I feel sorry for those people. You better get back to the word of God and you better get on God's side and you better get on the side that God is blessing and not cursing. And you better get educated and quit listening to Democrats and Republicans and politicians and listen to God's word. Because baby, this is not a Democrat issue and this is not a Republican issue. This is not a law of the land. This is a God prophecy. It's coming to pass. The world is about to end. And the sad thing is today that most of you are sitting here hoping it won't end because you're asleep. Your money, your cars, your schedules, your children. Don't you know that when the rapture takes place, it's the beginning of the rest of our lives. Get your children saved for God's sake. We're going to live forever. It's going to be unbelievable. Streets of gold. What in the heck is wrong with you trying to hold on to a vacation you want to take because you're asleep. You're drunk. You're drunk. You're drunk on your money. You're drunk on your houses. You're drunk on your schedules. You're drunk on your clubs. You're drunk on your sports. The Bears are going to get 68,000 in bad weather outside to watch a pigskin while the chairs of the church are empty. And if the rapture takes place, they'll still be watching the game and the church will be gone. I'm not going to let a football game separate me from the love of God. I'm not going to let a sport, I'm not going to let a club, I'm not going to give my, to somebody wake up. So pastor, do you think football is wrong? I didn't say football was wrong. I said we are drunk on things. And then we have lost our focus of what's happening. So let me, let me end this. So Hamas came in and destroyed. It killed 1,200 Jews. There is 250 underground tunnels. We know of about 15 Americans. They've already killed Americans. They've killed Germans. So Hamas will use them as shields. There's 300. When they, there's 360,000 soldiers that have went to the border. War is not going to stop. This is not a three-day deal. They're going to go through Gaza and they are going to kill. They're going to destroy the Antichrist spirit of Hamas. You get it. Now, here's what's real dangerous. Hamas, has been, Hamas is going to be destroyed. And when Israel moves in tomorrow, tonight, and they start going through Gaza. They will behead the people. The Hamas are going to behead our American friends, Germans. You're going to hear Stuff that's going to blow your mind because they will use them as shields. Hezbollah is another group like Hamas which is up in Damascus and Lebanon. Hezbollah says, if you do that, we're joining the war. Iran is full of nuclear. All you've been paying attention to is the last two years, begging Iran to make a salt treaty because they produce more uranium than any other country. And they sold it to Russia and they sold it to China. They have nuclear. Iran hates Israel and Iran hates the United States of America. You better say amen. You better start waking up to wondering. The Bible said, know your enemies. Iran has already said these words. We kiss the hands of Hamas who killed Jewish people and will burn that state down. Honey, let me tell you, Jerusalem's not going away. 
Ain't nobody taking Jerusalem back no more. God is in control. So quickly, quickly, this is to wake you up. If Hezbollah gets involved, you better pray like you have never prayed. Hezbollah will get Iran involved. If Iran moves, and did you hear what Mr. Putin said yesterday? We are on the Palestinian side. Meaning he said, we're on the Hamas side. Because they hate America. Because anybody that stands with Israel, they want to destroy. Thank God in all of our corruptness and all of our liberalness and all of our stupidity, we have enough sense. Thank God for our president that says, we will not be separated from Israel, which is the blessed people. This is not going to end. This is not going to end. War is not going to end. It's going to get worse. And I'm going to read you the last scripture verse, Psalms 122, if they'll get it for me. And the Bible says all of these nations will be brought together, and so Russia's coming south. I would love to tell you that they're going to quit fighting in Ukraine. They picked it up. He's coming south, folks. It's a Bible prophecy. He's not leaving Ukraine. He's going to take Ukraine over. His next spot will be Turkey. Who? Russia. He's the bear. I beg all of you to get this Bible. I created it, put it together. It's got all the pictures. Because if the grid goes out and you're stuck in your house and you can't get out of your house, you better have a safety tool because there's going to be people sneak over to your house saying, it's the end of the world, isn't it? And you don't even know the Bible. You better get this Bible. It's pictures. It's pictures. It took me 15 years. Ah, it's not that important. The trouble is, you went to sleep. That's your guide. This will give you pictures on what's happening to all the world. I don't have time to go through it. You need this Bible. It costs a lot of money to make. It costs, I think each one of these costs, it costs $50, $60 just to print and to get them in here. Today, they've been selling them so that we could get more. You know, we're not trying to make money off of them, but we're trying to get more. And so I said to Dr. J, give it to him for 99. Just let's get the, these are safe. These are the, this will teach you just pictures, pictures and scripture references that will teach you the end of the world and the rapture of the church. So you got Psalms 122. They're marching. Russia's marching. China will follow. Now I'm going to show you something, one thing. See up there in Lebanon? You can play that. See Lebanon up there? That's where the Hezbollahs are. They're a terrorist group too, and they, they're about ready to enter war. They've already been firing rockets to Israel. I'm going to give you a, I'm, I, I won't put it on the screen, but I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says Damascus, see Damascus up there? It's a 5,000 year old city. The Bible says in one day, Damascus will be destroyed. If Hezbollah moves toward war and joins in this battle, you mark it down, Damascus will be destroyed in one day. The Bible, can you imagine 3,000 years ago, the Bible said Damascus will be destroyed in one day? Whoever could believe that? That's the Hezbollahs. Now, Iraq and Iran will join in. Putin will come. We're already there, folks. We got our ships. You know where our ships are? Look in the blue there. Our ships are there. We're on the verge of sending troops there. Who would have ever dreamed that the whole world would end up in the ghetto? The Battle of Armageddon. But did you know something? There's going to be seven years of horrific, horrible tribulation. The church is going to leave and vanish before it all gets started. You're not hearing me. There's a trumpet going to sound. Every 30 scriptures in the New Testament talks about the rapture. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to marry Jesus. And the Bible said seven years later, Jesus on a white horse in Revelations. In the first, in the first Listen to this. In the first four verses of fourth chapter of Revelation, it talks about the church. If you'll read the first, 
first four chapters of Revelation, you'll find yourself there. You'll find yourself in whatever church you're in, spirit. The next four to 18, you don't even see the church because the church is gone. That's the revelation, the tribulation, the third of the world. Euphrates dried up, chaos, everything has happened because the church is gone. You get to the 19th chapter and the 20th chapter of Revelations and the church is with Jesus on the white horse. And you know what the Bible says? We're all in white. How come we're not in armor? Because the Bible said there won't be no need for armor. Because the Bible said he's going to speak in the, and when he speaks, he's going to destroy everything in that valley. You think this is a play thing? You think this is going to go away? It's not going away. And you know what's sad? Is Jesus has got to come before all this explodes. You know what's really sad? Is your children, your friends are not here today and they're lost. They love their beer. They love their liquor. They love their sex. They love their concerts. They love, they're in love with the pleasures of life. Somebody needs to wake up and say, folks, we better get to studying this because... Hello? We need to have revival. You need to stir yourself up. Are you here? You need to have prayer meetings in your house. You need to get your children. Are you hearing me? Stand to your feet and give the Lord a great big hand clap all over this building. Well, we got to go here. Sorry. Got to go. Listen, listen closely. Are you ready for this? Verse first of the 122. Verse, verse of chapter 122 of Psalms. You got it? This is where God said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Look at the first verse of this chapter. Look what it says. What does it say? I was glad. But if you're sleeping, you lose your glad. And when you lose your glad, you don't come to church. You don't worship God. You don't go to prayer meeting. You better get your glad back. Right? And said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We're going to run through this quick in closing. All the feet stand within the gates of old Jerusalem. Keep reading. Jerusalem is built in a city that is compact together. The next one, whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, under the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. The next verse, for there are set thrones of judgment. That means in the house of David, in the house of God, judgment is here. And when we come into this place being glad, and we begin to thank the Lord, keep reading, keep reading. God puts judgment. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall pray prosper that love thee peace be within thy walls and prosperity be within thy palaces what is he saying get to the house of God and get glad about the fact and pray for the peace of Jerusalem because peace will come to your house prosperity will come to your house notice that war started since October 7th notice the stock market has went straight up because anybody that stands with Israel, prosperity will be there. But may I tell you, before the flood came, Noah got in the ark. Before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot left town. Before God lets hell break out, the church is getting ready to be raptured. Wake up! Father, we thank you for these words. Let's walk out of here awake. Let's assemble together, Lord, to know that our salvation is near. Let us pray, God, I don't know how much time we got left, a month, a year, whatever it is, oh God, but I pray. I pray diligently that, Lord, that you will save our children. Oh God, save our relatives. God, I don't want to get to heaven and look for my kids and they've been left behind. Oh God, let me be a voice. Trim, I'm going to trim my lamps, put oil in my lamps and God I'm going to awake I'm going to wake out of sleep I'm going to shake myself as the elders come if there's someone here today that says oh I feel such a burden for my children I feel that I need a refreshing I, I want God to touch me run to the altar right now one two three just come come I want God to touch me if you need a healing come I want God to heal me I want an outpouring of the spirit of God I want God to touch me come if you want that prayer Come, come, come. You want-
want salvation. You want to be ready before he comes back. You want to wake up. Oh, God, stir me, stir me, stir me, stir me. Come in. They're coming. They're coming. Father, stir me, stir me. Wake me up. God, what's wrong with me, God? Lord, touch me. Everybody lift your hand and say, I was glad, I was glad that, we came to the house. that we came to the house. The blessing is on me. The blessing is on me. I will be protected. I will be protected. God will bless me. God will bless me. I'm gonna tell everybody. I'm gonna tell everybody. I can. I can. It's closer than we think. It's closer than we think. Say it's closer than we think. It's closer than we think. I'm going to be here Wednesday night. I'm going to be breaking more of this up. How many enjoyed today some education? Go and tell everybody you can as you're dismissed, all of you at this altar. Put your hand on your heart and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I ask you now. I ask you now. If there is anything in my heart. There is anything in my heart. Touch me. Touch me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. I believe. I believe. You are the son of the living God. You are the son of the living God. I believe. I believe. You're going to fill me. You're going to fill me. With oil. With oil. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. You're going to touch my family. You're going to touch my family. Baptize me now. Baptize me now. With your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. I, for I believe. For I believe. You have forgiven me. You have forgiven me. You're my Lord. You are my Lord. Now lift your hands as they sing it. Receive the Holy Spirit. Go on, receive it. Thank you, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit be upon you. Let the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit come upon you. Let the Holy Spirit come upon you. Let the Holy Spirit come upon you. Let the Holy Spirit Let the Holy Spirit Hallelujah! Now clap your hands and say thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask you to touch and bless them. Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you will do wonders and great miracles in their life. You have filled them with your spirit. Let them know, God, that, God, great things are going to happen to every one of them. And in the name of Jesus, everybody let your hands say, I receive it. I receive say, it. I receive it. I receive it. When you fill out a card, I'm doing a new thing. I'm writing you personally. When you fill out a card, when you come to this altar. So if you want to fill out a card right in front of you, they have the pins and the cards. I'm sorry, but today... God is going to do great things in your life. And come here Wednesday night to get more of what I'm talking about. God bless you. And go with the Spirit of God. Praise be upon you. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. I pray for your healing. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for your deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that God will save your children. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that your heart was moved and you moved closer to God. Thank you, Jesus. I pray you've given your heart to Jesus by saying, Lord, here's my heart. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Come into my life. If you have said those words, I want to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This has been a great, awesome word. God is moving in very unique ways. I probably am in panic mode as a watchman on the wall. I see, I see the fulfillment of the hand of prophecy 
all of my life, I have heard Jesus is coming. I have to be very careful that I do not fill one of the scriptures that are in the Bible about the end time. And that scripture is found in Peter that there would be a people that right before Jesus comes and in time things happen, that I would say, where is the promise of his coming? Now, the only ones that could say that are the ones that know about Jesus coming. Couldn't be the world. Couldn't be people that never heard about Jesus coming back. Have to be people who are saved. And they would say, oh, I've heard that before. I know Israel this and I know that's happening, but where is the promise of his coming? My prayer is, Steve Muncy, do not hesitate to note that what's happening to Israel, Jesus could come back. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time. I want to be ready. I want you to be ready. Wednesday night will be powerful. You know, the Bible says as we see the time ending, if you read the Bible, Hebrews, it says, forsake not the assemblies of yourselves together as you see the day approaching. What's he mean by that? He says, as you see the end time, you, you need to get to church. You need to assemble together. And I encourage you, many of you, you're assembling by way of streaming. As you open the Bible, as, you, as we commune together, it's very, very important. When you focus in on what God is saying, these are incredible days as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. My heart is stirred. I want to be a good watchman. I want to wake you up. I want you to be aware of what's happening. Pray for me that I will understand scriptures better, that I will be able to speak about prophecy better, that I will be able to present the times that we're living in accurately. I don't want to blow the whistle and sound the alarm and there not be a fire. No, I want to sound the alarm to know something is on fire in the prophecies of the Word of God, and they're coming to pass. Don't miss Wednesday night. Keep praying for Israel. We're going to keep praying for Israel, and we're going to believe God, that God's going to do a mighty work in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.